All right, all right, all right. The 15 strongest Dungeons & Dragons class officially ranked by the gamer. I I don't feel like I'm in a place to, to judge this one. And the biggest reason why is because I am a forever DM. I've never gotten to really experience playing every class. I've read the classes. I haven't put them to work. My players have played a lot of classes, but sometimes they'll play a class for fun and purposely ruin it. And other times they'll take a bad class and they'll make it I'm super busted. Yeah, be Strongest as in most damage per turn. Right. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, what what are they what are they going with? Strongest as in most damage per turn. Artificer has to be on top. <laughs> I would. Uh, I let's let's hope. Let's see about that. Artificer is pretty good, but uh, they're good. They're good at just uh, using guns and blowing stuff up. So I, I'm I'm curious to see where if artificers even make the list. If I'm making a tank in D and D, uh, I'm sorry, I already read that. A hill dwarf barbarian with tough and an already high con makes health go crazy high even in lower levels. Uh, you know what? That's a really good point. A hill, yeah, because you're you're stacking on stacking on stacking. That's some min maxing there, and I like that. Yeah, if you're building a tank, that's a really good way to start off because at low levels you're essentially just a person, and uh, you can't get deleted if you have enough health who cares if they can hit you 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 know you're you're freaking <laughs> you're meat you're eating meat for breakfast lunch and dinner right you're 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 chewing on beef jerky every time you're done beating up somebody you <laughs> nothing's gonna get past you how's it going Etsy? what's going on today all right so let's see let's see what this goes let's see how this goes but strongest is relative to the person and situation Want highest DPS output, kind of strong, play wizard, want strongest based on how much damage it can take, play barbarian. Right! You are right, cause cause really. It's so like like okay, so like what do I constitute as strong? Like what are they considering to be uh, the strong? Not all dungeon dragon classes are created equal. We rank the strongest classes out there. Cause if you want to talk about pure, purely DPS, right? Pure DPS, I think martial classes do more single target damage than wizard classes but then again wizards or spellcasters do more aoe damage than martial classes right because like as a martial class you min max especially if you take like a uh, sharpshooter uh with crossbow expert you can you can easily easily uh like pre-level 10 or 10 or at level 10 even you easily do 60 damage a turn 30 damage a turn just Boom, 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 boom. Um, so that's a lot. That's a lot of damage. Uh, just, just pure on one person. But at the same time, with wizards, yeah, you can dish out and you you can do sixty damage to like five different people. Thus, you know, doing over a hundred damage a turn. Um, when and if it's but as a wizard. You can't really one-shot anything. Something can just walk up, knock you on the head, you're unconscious, make your death saving throws, right? And, but as a barbarian, you can you can take all the hits all day long. And that's why it's good to have like a balanced uh, team. Unless you're a cleric, then you just run five clerics and then you just, you just roll over the campaign and laugh at your DM the entire time. <laughs> clerics are stupid. <laughs> I like clerics. They're just, they're really strong in this uh, edition. All right, let's see if they say what's the strongest. And we'll 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 choose whether we agree or not. What do I consider the strongest? I consider a class that can um so for me personally, this is just personally. I'm not saying overall, but if I were to do a tier list, and honestly, we sh I should do that. I should do a tier list over the classes. But if I were to do a tier list based on like classes and how they'd be strong and what do it. And the reason I don't I haven't done it yet is because I don't know all the subclasses. There's a ton of subclasses that I haven't even looked at, but it would be based off of balance is how well is your defense and your offense? How well can you balance the two or is your defense so strong that it makes up for your offense and vice versa? You know what I mean? So, uh, that's how I would, that's how I would do it. And I think like, like, like a Druid, for example, to me is super powerful because you're both a martial and a spellcaster which makes you just 
but you're super hard to it's super hard to play druid it's like playing a blue deck in magic the gathering because what what essentially is happening is you're having to choose those situations you have to know what those situations are goblin rogue look say less dude you said goblin rogue you just said my favorite two things in the world goblins and rogues that's it. Boom. That's the best class in D&D. Best race class combo. I'm not... <laughs> Goblin Rogue with Sharpshooter and Crossbow Expert at level 10 can do almost 80 damage in a single turn. Everything is relatively honest. Everything is relative, honestly. <coughs> True, man. And, you know, that's... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad... That's, you know, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, you can easily min-max a martial character to just one-shot a boss. Which is absolutely ridiculous. And it, of course, it's going to be a goblin. Of course, it's going to be a goblin. It's got to be a goblin. <laughs> but let's see what they have to say. Dungeons & Dragons won itself a vast fandom. All right, all right. Making your character. Rare. Uh, what is not fun of choosing who you are? Race backstory. Rare Dungeons & Dragons weapons are impossible to find. Okay. Um, dude, they did not just put druids at level at 15. Let me. With the five different editions and the classes to choose from, there's a core typical... Uh, like Wizard, Bard, Rogue. There are also supplementary prestige classes like Spell Slayer, Pacifist, Priest, Samurai. When there are so many classes, how do you choose? Some just pick whatever suits the character they have in mind. Others, however, like to choose based on how useful or powerful the class is. So when I think... Okay, so think about League of Legends, right? When I think about classes, when I was talking about like how much balance they are, think about League of Legends, if you play League of Legends, and think about like... Uh, a character that you pick how much agency does that character have and so when i'm talking about agency i'm talking about like how much influence can that character have on the battlefield and controlling the battlefield uh and and, and the things that they can do and the the more agency the better so like wizards obviously have a ton of agency because they have a ton of spells to pick from and they can uh affect the battlefield in almost almost thousands of difference of ways whereas barbarians not so much however if you do like like uh ancestral guardian barbarian you are forcing agency upon the dm no matter the situation right so you're create even though it's it's less i don't want to say creative even though it's less options it still creates a lot of agency making that specific type of barbarian useful and very more efficient than someone who could play a wizard and who has to pick has to have the right spells at the right time do certain spells have just as much agency probably but you get what i'm saying when i when it comes to classes i think like a an ancestral guardian barbarian has a ton of agency because it makes it to where the the npcs have to attack the barbarian or else they have disadvantage or, or everyone else has resistance or whatever uh, against the barbarian, and they're pulling from different editions. That's just cheating. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything from other editions. I thought they would just stick with fifth edition. So yeah, I'm not I'm not okay with that either. So far, we're not happy with this, but uh, let's let's go down and see. I thought they would explain why they would wh like what system they're using to make this happen, but it doesn't seem like they are. So um, we'll just we'll just go down. So Druid from 3.5 edition. I don't know anything about Druid from 3.5 edition. I'm a fifth edition Andy. I'm sorry. I used to play old D&D, but I was like a kid. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't pay attention. I rolled some dice and people told me what happened and I was happy with it. <laughs> like that was, I didn't, I, uh, I didn't conceptualize anything. I didn't break anything down. It's like, it's like when you used to play your old Nintendo games, you didn't like, you weren't, f you weren't analyzing the frames for Mario to be able to jump so you could skip through the level. Right. Um, in 3.5 edition, Druids are known to be one of the most powerful classes, which makes them especially good uh, scale very well. You can start out turning into an animal. Okay, yeah. Uh, in short, Druids is fun to play out of the gate. Stays that way. Revised Ranger 5th edition. So, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something kind of controversial here. The internet loves to poop on Rangers, right? The internet loves to say how bad Rangers are. I think Monks are worse. I think monk i don't like monks i think monks fall off so fast i think rangers are good especially if you talk to your dm and, and you and your dm kind of core align with uh, what type of campaign you're gonna do but i think monks just fall off 
Monks worse than Ragers. Hashtag. Uh, revised Rangers. Uh, this character class is known to be very versatile with a decent number of spells. Outside of combat, even low levels, they have a natural explorer's ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of have to correlate. You know, your first... Uh, if you start at level one, which if you're new to DMing, just start at level three. Honestly, just it's okay. You'll be fine. Just start at level three. If you're... If you're intermediate in DMing, it's okay to start at level 5. Just, like, level 1, you're just people. You can't do anything. 3 is when you get your abilities. And if you're a ranger and you start at level 1, you basically have to wait till you're level 3 to do anything. Unlike a fighter, which gets his stuff at, like, level 2. Revised ranger is immensely better than old ranger, but I wouldn't say it's one of the most powerful in all of D&D. Yeah, you kind of... What the and, he, and and there's a good reason for that is because rangers, you know, they're. I'm gonna go back to saying agency again. They don't have a lot of agency. You kind of have to give them things to make them useful. You have to give them feats. I almost feel obligated to give my rangers the same type of feats every time I play a ranger. You know what I mean? Not that I get to play rangers, but anytime I think about making a ranger. <laughs> Uh, and then clerics. Clerics 5th edition made number 13. What? Clerics are busted. Monk's base kit falls off hard after level 10. Yeah, they do. After level 10 and 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after that, you have a hard uh, reliant uh, on your subclass. Yeah. And you have to be careful in what you pick with your subclass on Monk. If you want to be like Avatar The Last Airbender and you pick the elemental uh, uh, Monk, you're, you're, you're going to have a bad time. Like that, they're... You end, you basically end up having to have to get like a really strong magic item to uh, subsidize uh, what you're going through as a monk because otherwise you're just you, you're gonna get the short end of a stick. Clerics are well loved. Uh, they are one of the oldest classes in the franchise, and they are many versions of them. I I don't know why clerics are at thirteen. I thought clerics would be further. Bards at twelve. That seems fair. Fifth edition bards. Um, bards are really cool. They have a ton of agency. They're both, they're, they're, they're more of a support class, not so much of a healer class. And, uh, they can really affect the battlefield, uh, which is, I think, super cool about a bard. I think the, the fact that you can control the battlefield makes them, uh, really powerful. And, uh, it's one of those things where you have to deal with the bard on the field. So, like, think of a bard as, like, as, like, Sonya. Son Sonya in, in League of Legends. I know some of you guys probably don't play League of Legends. I'm sorry, but League of Legends reminds me so much of D and D. Uh, it, it's I think of everything as D and D, right? But whenever you're playing, you want to take out not so much the healer first, but like the person who has so much utility in the group. And even though Sonya is like really good at healing. The fact that she can speed boost everyone away and she can like you want to focus her more than you want to focus the the adc the dps people because she's making it so much harder for you to kill the rest of the team because she's controlling every facet and she's doing damage on top of that yeah uh bards are essentially like that which which makes sense because she she basically plays an instrument she's essentially a bard herself what happened to the background you bought more stuff <laughs> Let me show you. What's up, man? What's up? So, um, the, I, so we got, we got a cabinet for the background. I didn't buy more stuff. I didn't buy more stuff. I, I've had this stuff. It's just, it just hasn't been in the room. Mind you, yes, yes, I know. There's a lot of ladies up here. I've only bought that statue for myself. Okay. Everything else has been a gift. <laughs> Everything else, it's been a gift. Uh... <laughs> you don't believe me? <laughs> Out of 11, it's a one? Oh, man, it's not that bad. It looks good. Now, the, you, remember, you remember what the pop wall used to look like? Those are all the extra pops right here. I don't know. I need to get a. I need to get a different. Uh, I need to get a better shelf. Oh, out of eleven figures, one is a man. 
Uh, yeah, the, the one that's a man, that's the one my wife bought me. <laughs> you can tell when my friends bought me something, when the bros bought me something, and then when the wife bought me something. <laughs> Out of 11 figures, what's a man? Yeah, they all, they all think I'm a pervert. I wonder why. I mean, if you ever watch this channel, maybe. <laughs> maybe you know. <laughs> maybe you understand. Up there a second. Honestly, if you want to do um, ATL, uh, ATLA as a monk in 5th edition, forget elemental subclass. I'd go for um, Ax Ascended Dragon, honestly. See, I haven't read into Ascended Dragon. But, uh, yes, I think there are certain subclasses you do need to just forget about. Yeah, I agree 100%. Forget the elemental subclass. I know it would be super cool to be Aang is out, or Korra from Avatar The Last Airbender, but you just drop it. Don't do it. You're, you're not the Avatar. You're not the chosen one. <laughs> be a different punchy, punchy person. Uh, mine, better quality. Yours is really good quality. So we got Bards at 12. Um, I think Bards have a lot more agency. Shadow Dancer 3.5 edition. I don't know what a Shadow Dancer is. It's a prestige class. Is built mostly off a rogue class and goes a long way towards removing its biggest shortcoming, which is it requires party cooperation to be really effective. Interesting. Um, show the... Oh, show the article. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I... Since the rogue is based off your character not being seen, you would be seen separate. So, I mean, if if this is if this is a rogue that doesn't need a party to be relied on, then yeah, I can imagine this being one of the strongest classes because rogues do. The thing about rogues, which is so funny about rogues, most people who want to play rogues are, let's be honest, we're we're a bit of edge lords. And we're the loner guys that have the tragic backstories of our parents being killed. So the fact that we have to use our skills and abilities. You write every rogue's backstory is my parents were killed. I grew up on the streets of Gotham. I mean, Otham. And my, I had to learn how to survive by myself. But all my skills and abilities require me to have a friend nearby to make them work. <laughs> I thought a shadow dancer was an introvert at a club that dances in the corner by themselves. It, oh, oh no, that's just me. That's called a Mario. I'm, I'm over there in the, like everyone else is doing all these cool stuff and I'm over there listening to the music and I'm just like... I've been really liking the way of Mercy Monk subclass. It's both DPS and healer subclass. I'll have to check out Mercy Monk. I'll have to, uh, it's both DPS and healer. A healing monk. I'd love to see what that looks like. Whereas like a cleric probably like flies down and bestows upon you like a, some healing from their relic. And then a monk just walks up to you and it's just like, bah! <laughs> you feel better now? Wizard 5th edition. Wizards are really strong. They basically can learn every spell except for uh, healing spells. So they're useful in all the wrong ways. Uh, yeah, good amount of daily spells. They can learn everything. It's expensive to be a wizard, but they can learn everything. At high levels, you should be getting a ton of money. You should be getting like a lot of rare items. You can sell your items. Make more, make more money. Do better jobs. And uh, yeah, you can get all the spells you want. Makes sense. They're saying a fighter is stronger than a wizard. A fighter, a fifth, edi fifth edition fighters are really strong. Even if you just go by the player's handbook and you go with a champion fighter, I think a fighter can take on a wizard. Um, you would have to build it pretty, pretty good. You know, if you if you had the right stuff, you know, you'd have to build a fighter pretty good. Uh. You can do the worm? Oh yeah, that's my one dance move is the worm. Olazar is pretty strong, yeah I am. Yeah, yeah, fighters are fighters are ridiculous. They're good at single targets again, right? They're good at single targets. If a fighter was to fight a, a wizard, I think the fighter would come out on top. Just 1v1. Uh, 
the wizard has some things like banishment and stuff like that, but nothing to keep the fighter away from good. Uh, really, the wizard would be good at running away from the fighter. That's really as good as the wizard would be from a fighter. And I think it should be that way. I like fighters. I like being just a, a person that can beat stuff up with a sword. So disintegrate. True, true. Like I said, it it's it's it depends on how you build the fighter, right? Because like, are we getting feats with this? Or are we just doing a, a raw, raw stuff? But disintegrate, yeah, just delete them. Just uh, just Roy Mustang him. Just snap him out of existence. Paladins are really strong. Paladins are really strong. Paladins are really cool. They're basically fighters, but they can add spells to their stuff. And whenever they slap you, they bring down all the holy rock god of smite down with it. So paladins, uh, you know, I like paladins. Pal I, I've never really gotten to play as a paladin. I've always kind of wanted to play as a paladin. Anytime I have to choose, I always end up picking fighter. I'm going to be honest with you guys, because I just like, I like the idea of an underdog. I like the idea of someone who has no magical abilities, who just do self-train. That's why I like fighters. I like rogues. Um, just, they're just the underdog. There's nothing special about them. Anyone could have, they're Batman, which is funny because I like Superman over Batman. There's something to that. <laughs> Dragon Discipline 3.5 edition. That just sounds like a cool. I'm assuming this is a prestige class. I bet Megabyte will take them all. Megabyte's pretty strong as it is right now. Megabyte's really strong at low level. I'd like to see him get higher. Uh, the draw of a Dragon Discipline is simple. Upon taking this prestige. Yeah, it's a prestige class. Your character begins to turn. You, you just turn into a dragon. That's a Magic the Gathering card, by the way. I think, I think this is a Mythic card. Weirdly, again, the idea of a dwarf rogue, instead of having dead parents and being a loner, he was banished from his clan and became something of a charlatan. In a big city, he could be a thief rogue, too. Just play into the dwarven obsession uh, thing. <laughs> well, you don't have to stereotype dwarves, uh, but I do agree. Yeah, I like that backstory. I think, I think, ironically enough, Dragon Fist, I think you like dwarves. I think you got a thing for the dwarven people. The dwarven folk. You see yourself as a dwarven one and you want to go in and you can't help yourself but to raise a mug. You want to have a giant old beard. Then you want to bring it in and you want to take in that axe and you love Gimli. And you don't tell anybody that you got thrown onto that bridge. But when you and Aragorn took on all them Uruks just by yourself. Isn't that a badass scene though? Aragorn. Aragorn's essentially a ranger that can't cast spells. And Gimli is a fighter. And they they freaking 2v100 those ur Urks on the on the bridge. Um, I don't know what a dragon discipline is, but it sounds badass that you just get to turn into a dragon. I you know that new uh ranger subclass? The one where you get like a pet dragon, like a spiritual dragon? That sounds so badass. Like I want I want someone in my party to play one of those. Where you just you straight up just get like a spiritual dragon, just like as a as as your buddy. That sounds so sick. But there's also something so like adorable and cute about just being like a freaking uh, uh, just having like 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 an animal, like a bird or a bear or a wolf, right? I think like oh, I'm just so into sight. I want to play them all. I want they're all there's like there's something for everyone in D and D. That's the best part. Uh, Blade Singer Second Edition. Oh wow, Blade Singer goes back far. I didn't know Blade Singer went all the way back to Second Edition. Uh, this elf-centered class, elf-centered class. Uh, that's a tiefling, my dude. Um, is best due to its strong abilities and bonuses. In some cases, a D&D fandom have even said that Blade Singer is a broken class, meaning that it could be. Oh, okay. We know what broken. You're, you're, you're literally. What? I'm sorry. You're called the gamer. And you're defining broken to us? I appreciate it. Thank you. Class meaning it can be overpowered, such as post have made Dungeon Dragons forbid the class through not all though not all agreed Blade Singer is broken. Okay. Unlike paladins and their oaths, though, they do not lose power if they cannot help other elves. Interesting. Interesting. Drake Warden is dope. That's what it's called. Drake Warden. It's not even spiritual Drake either. It's a straight up actual Drake. Yo, that's freaking sick. 
Oh, dude, that's sick. Please, you like it gets big enough for you to ride it, right? And then you just take mounted combat. <laughs> Fly around on a freaking dragon and shoot them down with your arrows. God, say less, man. That's all I used to pretend to do when I was a kid. Bard first edition. Apparently, first edition bard was. So first edition bard is more broken than fifth edition bard is what the game's telling me. We're getting down to the top five and I'm not seeing fifth edition on here. We've, we've exhausted through most of the fifth edition stuff. They've nerfed the crap out of the classes, man. Going all the way back to first edition, bards were actually a lot more powerful than other editions. The original prestige class. Uh, for example, oh, they had examples on all these that I probably should have read. They could dual class without requiring certain prerequisite abilities. Oh, wow. They also gain uh, D6 HP all the way up to level 24. While other classes stopped doing that around 9th level. Dang. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. Archer 2nd edition. 3.5 edition. Man, these classes got nerfed. Uh, to make matters even crazier. Okay, this could easily be getting getting five attacks per round and doing a 1d10 damage per arrow. Sheesh. Dude, you're just machine gunning these people down, man. Uh, could get a plus three to hit and damage plus three to hit. Okay, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean I, that's good, that's good. If they shot at point blank range. Oh, they, they, they actually get stronger if you get closer to them. That's not how that works. That's not how, that's not how archery works, <laughs> my dude. Even in later editions, they got rid of the archer class, making optimized rangers pretty. Dang. Can you imagine the closer you got, the faster you got deleted. Spell Warp Sniper. That just sounds sick. A Spell Warp Sniper. It makes it easier to hide from enemies and surprise them with magical attacks that are harder to resist or dodge. You get sneak attack damage on your spells, which is incredibly good. You can get sneak attack damage on your spells? Yo. Meaning, uh, each level of Spell Warp Sniper provides your character with additional spells per day. Meaning you don't have to sacrifice uh, spells per day if you do with some other prestige classes. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see, I can see how these made top five. I made a cool RP and mechanic combo character being an um, Eldrin Drake Warden. Each time you summon the Drake, you can give it an extra elemental bonus and resistance so when the um eladrin changes with the season so does the drake with the team that's cool i like that that's nice of you <laughs> you don't changing with the seasons every time you summon it that's a neat little thing goes through metamorphosis Wizards 3rd Edition. Okay, what was so special about Wizards 3rd Edition? Uh, there are a total of 8 schools of magic. It's so good. Mostly due to the same reasons. 5th uh, Edition, including a wide variety of spell choices. And exclusive items. Okay, they have exclusive items. There are a total of 8 schools of magic to choose from. This one, uh, like the later edition, this one could also get to know it's familiar. So you're playing third edition, no need to fear the wizard, still amazing. I'm, yeah, I'm assuming you just get to learn all the schools of magic and you just, you just get to walk around and blow people up. Well, Artificer didn't even make the list. I'm sorry, Cosmic Kate, that Artificer didn't make the list. I am just as shocked as you are. Winter, cold spring, summer, fire, autumn, poison. Spring is lightning. I like that spring is lightning. Uh, uh, Duomer Keeper is one of the most powerful prestige classes in D&D. Am I saying that right? Duomer? Duomer Keeper? One reason is that the class can cast... Did I? 
Did I read that correctly? One reason that this class can cast Wish and Miracle for free? Several times a day? Oh my god. Wish is a very powerful spell. Capable of replicating the effects of most spells. Miracle can do the same thing. I don't even know what Miracle can do. Miracles can do the same thing with other spells such as cleric spells or spells that can bend reality or even raise an undead army. Dwammer Keeper. Dwammer Keeper. OP? What the fuck? Yeah, I know, man. What the fuck? I know what I'm going to be next game. So your subclass is the DM, basically. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> <laughs>